TSN presents LaVette Blue Jays Baseball from Cleveland Municipal Stadium. It's the Blue Jays and the Indians. Brought to you by Petro Canada Dealers and Agents. Our energy is Canada. And by General Motors of Canada Limited. This is game two of a three-game series between the Indians and the Blue Jays. Last night, Cleveland took advantage of a couple of box by Mark Eichhorn and a hit batter to go on to a 6-3 victory in game one. Tonight, it'll be left-hander Scott Bales against Todd Stolomeyer, but Buck Martinez, these Indians are making believers out of everyone. Well, you know, Fergie, what they did over the winter was they emphasized pitching. They wanted to beef up their pitching staff, and that's what they've done. Doug Jones out of the bullpen has been phenomenal for them. They have an outstanding starting rotation. Tonight, we're going to see a good, solid left-hander in Scott Bales. But what they're doing right now, they're not hitting the ball right now. But defense and pitching are winning games for them. I think that's a true sign of a contending ball club. It seems like they're scouts here scouting other scouts. Lots of rumors flying around about trades. We'll talk about that in our telecast. But tonight, game two, Indians Blue Jays from Cleveland and Scott Bales, who is five and four and has certainly done a fine job for Cleveland against Todd Stottlemyre, who's back into the starting lineup because Nunez has been placed on the DL. So stay with us. It should be a good one here tonight. sure are enjoying their baseball here in Cleveland because it's the first time since 76 that the Indians have been in second place for more than a day this late in the season. The yesterday, of course, uh, Boston with Bruce Hurst pitching beat the Yankees. Uh, Baltimore upsetting Detroit 5-2. Cal Ripken four hits in that one, including his 10th home run. The Blue Jays nine and a half back. Uh, the Indians a game and a half back. And the reason for that? man named Doug Jones and what a job he did last night. Doug Jones last night in the seventh inning with two outs. Doc Edwards called on you to face Fred McGriff. Did that surprise you at all? Uh, just a little bit. I knew he'd gotten Chasseter up uh, before me. I thought maybe he'd probably be the man to face the lefty. But uh, because of the motion of my uh, my change up, it, it kind of tails away a little bit from the left handers. Sometimes I'm a little more effective on a given night uh, than, than other nights. I had a lot of rest in three or four days, I think. Didn't pitch in Detroit, so I think he was a little, had a little more confidence in the fact I might have a little better stuff to do. I don't know, the last game. 25-year-old Scott Bales gets the starting assignment tonight for Cleveland. He's 5-4, and 2-0 and oh lifetime against Toronto. This is the lineup he'll be facing, brought to you by Apple Canada. For Jimmy Williams and the Blue Jays, it'll be Fernandez, Mosby, and Barfield. He moves up to the number three spot, trying to get him some good pitches with George Bell behind him. Bell back in the lineup after a day off yesterday. Fred McGriff over at first base. Kelly Gruber, the third baseman. Cecil Fielder, the right-hander, gets the call at the DH spot. Pat Porter's behind the plate, and Manny Lee gets a start. He'll bat ninth and play second base. The defense backing up the left-hander. In the outfield, Hall in left. Joe Carter in center, and what a sensational catch he made of Tony Fernandez. Corey Snyder in right. Jacoby, he had three hits, including a home run last night. The 36-year-old veteran Ron Washington at shortstop. Julio Franco, who injured his knee in last night's game, left it in the fourth inning, but he's back in the lineup tonight. Willie Upshaw, the ex-Blue Jay at first, and Andy Allenson doing the catching. Scott Bales, left-hander. Five and four on the year, two, 4.30 ERA. Has a good fastball, hard slider. Good changeup. This is his 11th start. There's 25 strikeouts in 67 innings, so you can see that the Blue Jays have a good chance to put the ball in play. The Jays last year lost two to Bales. They gave up five earned runs in 20 and two thirds innings pitched. Tony Fernandez, who took the collar last night, 0 for 4. He did have a run batted in, and Tony is in a slump. Three hits in his last 22 at bats. His defense has certainly improved. Uh, the warm weather is here, and the Blue Jays are getting more out of Fernandez. 
Get into center field, right at Carter. He didn't have to move. Tony's not going to be too pleased with Joe Carter before he gets out of town. Look at Carter smiling. Yeah, I got him last night, and I get him again tonight. Fernandez hit that one on the nose, but right at Joe Carter. He didn't hit it as well as he did last night when he lined that shot up in the right center. Carter said, Tony's been stealing hits from me for years. It's about time I caught one off of his bat. Well, he made what I thought was the finest catch I've seen this season last night. 72 degrees here at game time. A little bigger crowd than last night. They had just over 9,000. Mosby is having a great year against left-handers. Hitting 353, a couple of home runs, 12 RBIs. He says he concentrates more against left-handers. Well, you know what? Bosby has talked about is he's got to stay on the ball and he's a better hitter when he drives the ball left center right center and against a tough left hander like Bales he really has to concentrate because Bales has good velocity and a very hard sharp breaking slider what Bales will do to the left handers is just with that fastball inside off the plate throw that hard slider to the outside he'll go back and forth to both sides of the plate That's hit to left field for Mel Hall. And he makes the catch. Well, as we said, not a bad crowd tonight. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 to 15,000. But it's tough to tell. School is just about out. I'm sure that as soon as the kids get out of school, you'll see a lot of big crowds here. Indians are playing good baseball. These fans will come out and support them. They actually had 84,000 in here for a doubleheader back in 54. Barfield batting out of the number three slot tonight. His name once again being banded around, trade rumors. Jesse just hasn't been in that groove. Trouble with the wrist injury, now that's behind him, but he hasn't got his timing yet. Pops it up in the infield. And a shortstop, Washington. So it's three up, three down for the left-hander, Scott Bale. We head to the bottom of the first. You're watching the Bats, Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Stottlemyre, last time out, out of the bullpen in Boston, you had a great game. That's got to do a lot for your confidence going into tonight's game. Yeah, it really does. It was the first time, actually, since Seattle to where I was really getting a good balance point. Knew I was throwing the ball, had a good idea out there, and, and had some good leg drive and cut the ball loose. You have to have an awful lot of confidence and patience in yourself and your own ability to get through a stretch like this, especially since it's your first time in the big leagues. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it hasn't exactly been uh, all diamonds, I guess, as you should say, as far as, you know, starting out in the big leagues here. You know, I've had to go through some struggles and some tough times, but... You know, I always kept the confidence, always kept working hard and knew that, you know, my abilities would, would work through this and that if I kept working hard, it would all pay off. So um, to get through a stretch like that and, and, and hope, hopefully I don't have to go through another stretch like that this year and uh, just keep working hard and go out there and, and let things happen instead of maybe press a little bit and, and try to do too much. And the defense backing up Stottlemyre. Bell, who didn't play last night, is in left field. Mosby in Barfield. Manny Lee at second base gets his first start. He's coming off the DL. Borders the rookie doing the catching. A fastball for a strike. The leadoff hitter, Julio Franco. Johnny Stottlemyre won his second game last time out in relief in Boston. Two and seven. This is his 13th game. Talk about confidence. This young man sure has it. You know, anytime you go through a tough spell, he keeps plugging away, working on his pitches trying to perfect his control you got to give him a lot of credit because he's kept his head up during this whole spell he's ahead 0-2 and, and Franco follows that pitch out of play well I didn't think we'd see Franco in the lineup tonight he injured that uh, knee of his last night some said it might have been a cartilage problem he was at the hospital as late as 515 getting x-rays getting it checked out obviously he's okay Hits it to center field. Mosby breaks in over his head. Franco, because of the fact he can't run, has a double. And he limped in the second base. Mosby completely misjudged that ball. 
He came charging hard. Fastball out over the plate. Franco with that great extension. The ball carries. Mosby comes in a couple steps, sees it's over his head, tries to jump for it, but has no chance. On healthy legs, Franco's at third base on this play. Now Mosby has to track it down all the way up against the center field wall. It's funny, yesterday I was standing at the batting cage with Ernie Wood and a bunch of guys were hitting, and Ernie, his first thing he said, boy, does the ball ever carry in this park? You know, we, we saw that last yeah. night on those fly balls to center. A couple of hit out there, Mosby had to go all the way back on the warning track as the ball kept drifting and drifting. We saw Barfield do the same thing last night, come in a couple steps on a ball off Brooke Jacoby's bat that sailed over his head. Well, that's not a pretty way to open up a game for the Blue Jays, that's for sure. This cues hurt him in last night's game. They scored four runs in the sixth inning on the strength of one double. Two walks, a hit batter. Willie did not have a hit last night. Two high fastballs from Stottlemyre behind. No, uh, two balls and no strikes. Now Willie Upshaw can sit on that fastball. He's trying to pull the ball anyway, trying to advance Franco from second to third, but he can really look for that fastball now. At the right field, Barfield back to the track. Back. He's got it. And tagging up, Franco heads into third. Practically walks down. Boy, he's hurting. I don't know how much longer we'll see him in this game. He's obviously not 100%. John Goro over checking with him. Ball keeps carrying on Barfield. Upshaw hits the drive all the way to the wall, and he goes right to the wall, makes Thanks. the grab. Upshaw did his job. He got Franco from second to third. Now he's just 90 feet away. But Barfield never took his eyes off that fly ball. With Joe Carter at the plate and Franco on third base with a gimp leg, maybe if the Blue Jays get a sharp hit ground ball, they'll try to go to the plate. Blow it away, a fastball to Carter. They'll play at regular depth on the infield, but I would think, especially Kelly Gruber, if he gets a hot shot down there at third, maybe Fred McGriff over at first, they might go to the plate. Franco not running 100%. Stottlemyre got ahead of Franco and then fell behind to Upshaw and is behind here to Carter. He breaks his bat. McGriff will have a play on that for the second out, and that'll bring up the third baseman, Brooke Jacoby. Brooke Jacoby, over the years, you've had trouble hitting in April and May, but this year you got off to a pretty good start and then tapered off, but you certainly like the warm weather. Last night, three hits and a home run. You must feel that that stroke's coming around. Well, it, it always seems every year early in the season uh, I struggle a little bit and uh, it takes time to find the groove. And once I get to the groove, then I'm then I'm all right. Uh, hopefully, last night the start of uh, some good things to come for me personally. Well, he hit his first home run in the last 28 games last night. He hits a high fly ball to Barfield, who came in on it. Now he'll go back. So Stottlemyre and the Blue Jays get out of that first inning after Mosby misjudged that fly ball in center field. So we're heading to the second inning. Still no score. You're watching the bats. Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Second inning here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. No score. Blue Jays and Indians. Uh, Left-hander Scott Bales will be facing George Bell, McGriff, and Gruber. Bales in his last five starts, four and one, with three complete games. So he got off to a, a slow start. He was one and three in his first four. And he came to Cleveland in 85 in the Johnny the Master deal. That was a funny deal. The Pirates mm -hmm. wanted a shortstop. They traded LeMaster, who wasn't figured to play here in Cleveland, and Bales was just one of several people they had a shot at. Pretty wise decision by the Indians. Well, an interesting move last night. Bell was given a rest. He has been struggling at the plate. His average dipped to 299 Sunday in Boston as he fouls that one back out of play. 
He just seems to be off balance when he goes up to swing, like he's overstriding or something. Obviously, I'm not a hitting instructor, but I know he's not comfortable just looking at his stance and the way he is reaching for so many balls. Upshaw will have a play on that. He's got it. Bell is out of there. And that'll bring up the big first baseman, Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff, in my mind, you have the best eye at the plate on this ball club. How did you get that confidence so early in your career? Really, uh, a lot of pitchers, they want to pitch me away and make get me to swing at bad pitches and everything. So I just got to keep telling myself uh, to lay off these bad pitches. And if they want to walk me, let the next guy do the job or whatever. And don't get too uh, aggressive and just start up, just go up there just swinging away because, uh, you know, I love to hit. But still, again, pitchers want to pitch around me and want me to hit it, hit swing their pitch. So got to have a lot of patience. And I think just the more you play, the more confident you get to play, and the more experience you get, and the more pitches you see, and then you know what pitches to lay off of and which ones to swing at. Well, I'll tell you, he sure does have some kind of patience up there. Well, you can see what they're doing, too, throwing them all breaking pitches. They have tremendous respect for him as a young hitter already, 339. Fifth in the league. They look down for the appeal. The third base umpire Rick Reed, and he said no. But so it's three balls and a strike. He's done a great job very quickly learning the strike zone. And he's tied with Mosby, the club lead in walks with 32. You know, it doesn't take long for the word to get around and the Indians are aware that McGriff can handle just about any fastball, so Bales has thrown him an awful lot of breaking pitches in this first at bat. There's another one. He got away with a hanger, threw that one up in McGriff's eyes, but Bales gets the strikeout. So Bales has set down five in a row. Brings up the third baseman, Kelly Gruber. Kelly, last night, homered in the second off John Farrell. He was hit by a pitch in the third inning struck out a couple of times. Watching Gruber from this center field camera, notice how he gets in his batting stance and then he just pushes his weight back on his back leg, really cocking, getting a good cocking action, pushing all his weight back there so he can uncoil and go forward. Cito Gaston has been working with all these young hitters. He's really got them Pushing back right there. That's popped up in the infield. Upshaw, the first baseman, will call for it. Whoa. A little dance on that. Six in a row for Scott Bales and the Cleveland Indians. We're heading to the bottom of the second. No score. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Todd Stottlemyre on the mound for the Toronto Blue Jays. And he'll be facing Mel Hall, Corey Snyder, and Dave Clark here in the second inning. And a beautiful evening in Cleveland. Apparently it rained quite a bit in Toronto today. It was up to 92 or 93 degrees here in Cleveland. Just gorgeous. Well, we needed that rain to get Ernie Witt's golf tournament all nice and softened up on the green. So, mm -hmm. Thursday. Harley Waite. And the team all lined up. Yeah, you never told me who's on your team. Oh, I've got some heavyweights. I bet, huh? A team of sandbaggers. four sandbaggers. Well, <laughs> there's one in particular. And all his friends at the Board of Trade know exactly who that is. Mel Hall. 18 home runs last year. Has not hit one this year. He was named co-captain of the Indians. And that's really done a lot for him this year, don't you think? I think it has. Mel Hall has always been the kind of a guy that's dancing to a different drummer, and Doc Edwards appointed Mel Hall and Joe Carter co-captains. And talking with Mel here in Cleveland, he says, you know, he said, I like it. He said, it gives me a feeling of leadership and responsibility. And a young player like this might just really help him out. But Doc Edwards has done some great things with this young club. He said, hey, let's go out and have fun, relax. We got a lot of talent. He fights that one off and fouls it back out of play. Hall 
is off to a slow start at the plate, to say the least. He has yet to hit his first home run, but he told me, he said, you know, this is the best slump I've ever had. The team is winning. Everybody's playing well. We're having a lot of fun. And the slump doesn't seem so bad now because we're playing winning baseball. So that's a big change in his attitude. And I think it's a positive one. It's something Doc Edwards is quite a bit responsible for. Well, he had a slow first half last year and then tore the league apart, getting 330 in the second half. He hits that high in the air. Mosby, the center fielder, comes in and makes the foot out. That'll bring up the right fielder, Corey Snyder. You can see by that batting average that the hitters well, he's had his problems really against left-handers, hitting 376 off him. And the right-handed hitters just 100, 8 for 80. And I'm sure that the other managers have made a note of that and loaded the lineup with left-handers. Shatters that bat as well. It's the third one. And Snyder's out of there. That's a real tough play. The ball was hit off at the end of the bat, and you see the bat coming through with that big swing, and it comes off the end of the bat. It's like a changeup. You see how he really had to concentrate and take that hop, and then the young fella gathers himself, takes a little step, and tosses a strike to first base. This telecast presented by authority the Toronto Blue Jays and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Jays. As Dave Clark, designated hitter, he's alternating with Ron Kittle in that position here. A big year in Buffalo last year. They called him up. He played in 29 games with the Indians. He hit three home runs. The number one selection of the Indians in the June 83 draft. Shatters another bat. That could drop in, though, for a base hit, and it does. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> that's number four in shattered bats. Maybe they'll run out of bats. <laughs> we keep going all night long, and they won't be able to hit any longer. But Clark is strong enough to fight this one off and just loops it in front of Mosby and behind Fernandez at shortstop. Stottlemyre has that good velocity tonight. He's getting in their kitchen. He sure looks like he has. The Red Sox coming to Toronto Friday, June the 10th for a three-game series. And I would imagine we might see Roger Clemens on Sunday. Possibility. I'll guarantee you Clemens will be looking for a little revenge after that tough well, game he had. He's not the only one on that team looking for revenge. And there's about 24 of them. Yeah, Blue, Jays the Blue Jays sweeping a four-game series. Talk about Johnny McNamara's job in jeopardy over there in Fenway. They went into Yankee Stadium last night, though, and Bruce Hurst won his seventh game. There's only so much a manager can do. You can't win races without horses. They had some injuries. Greenwell was out for a while. Benzinger's out now. Lee Smith has had his problems. Up to a quick start, looked like he was going to be a big plus. Hasn't been as effective as they'd hoped. The 1 1 pitch, and there goes Clark, and that's fouled back right over our heads here in the broadcast booth. Clark on the hit and run with Washington at the plate. Washington handles the bat so well. Doc Edwards was trying to take advantage of the veteran savvy at the plate. He fought it off. It was a pretty good pitch. But he fouled it back. Clark is rescued down there at second base. Clark is 0 for 2 in stolen base attempts, so Edwards is trying to advance him with a hit and run. There he goes. The bat flies out of his hand down to Gruber. And Washington is out of there. And so are the Indians. Three two innings here at Municipal Stadium. No score. What a job that young man's doing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN.
we see today where the Phillies fired Woody Woodward and replaced him with Ray Shore. And Paul Owens apparently has been given another assignment. He was in Boston on the weekend scouting the Jays or the Red Sox. Well, I think Owens was given a more responsible yeah. assignment trying to get him back into the active role with the ball club. The Phillies, a talented team, have been unable to get it untracked. The, uh, the Phillies have uh, made some deals over the winter, and they just haven't got it started. Bill Bradley, for one, they thought would really chip in and help with his offense, his speed, and his overall play, but he really hasn't gotten started. It's tough when you go from league to league without knowing an awful lot about the pitchers. They're looking for a shortstop, and then he thought that they came to watch Manny Lee, possibly, as fielder. Hits that one to Washington. The throw is high, but Upshaw makes the play. One down here in the third. Boy, Ronnie Washington's had a busy night the last couple of nights. He got a start last night's game. Did a good job. Got a couple. Got a hit. Got an RBI when he was hit with the bases loaded. They turned three double plays last night. And Washington made a couple other outstanding defensive plays. So the veteran shortstop getting a chance to play and making the most of it. Batters, the catcher Pat Borders. Bob Gebhardt is here from the Minnesota Twins. He's been following the Jays for the last five days and all sorts of speculation going on there. And he's driving the Toronto Writers crazy. Borders hits that to Washington, who backhand steps, throws wide at first, and Upshaw makes the tag on Borders. Good play on both ends of that defensive play. Upshaw makes the tag on a high throw. Good backhanded grab by Washington. Knows he has to hurry because he's so deep in the hole. He doesn't have great velocity. Gets rid of it quickly. Upshaw with the tag on Borders. Nice play on both ends. So Bales now is retired eight in a row. That'll bring up Manny Lee. Manny making his first start. He's coming off the DL June the 1st. And there's been so much speculation about this young man. A lot of teams interested. It's pretty tough to trade a guy when he's injured. He hits that one down to Washington. Another backhand. A throw is high, but he's safe. Richie Garcia said Upshaw came down and missed first base. Washington will be charged with an air. He's had a busy inning. Another good backhanded play. Just throws high, and he knew he threw it high. Upshaw, watch his foot come down. It was just off the bag. Garcia felt he came wide of the bag. Looks like Upshaw's foot might have brushed it, but up Garcia called it the way he saw it. His toe kicked up the dirt off the bag, so he thought he missed it. Well, Garcia was right in perfect position to make that call. The leadoff hitter, Tony Fernandez, as Lee gets back. So an error has been charged to the shortstop, Ron Washington, a 36-year-old veteran. Oh, man, he's getting a good lead over there off the left-handed. This is only speculation on my part, Buck, but it sure looks like the Blue Jays are getting set to make a deal. Well, you know, things are kind of happening. Manny Lee gets a start tonight. Liriano swinging the bat as well as he has all year long. Hit a home run last night. Also had a bunt single. Now Manny Lee gets a start. Maybe it's a showcase. Everybody see that he's healthy again. He hit that ball pretty well to shortstop. No question about his defensive abilities, and he wants to play shortstop. they can prove he's sound he has some value on the market the Phillies for one as you mentioned looking for shortstop Gagne starting to hit over in Minnesota there's talk of fly Levin wanting out of Minnesota ready to make a move Tommy Harris said he wants to go I, back to the National League I wouldn't think the Blue Jays would be interested in fly Levin they might be interested in Tommy Hurst veteran second baseman expressed the desire to go back to the National League. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year. So if you do make a deal for him, you've got to 
understand the fact that you have to sign him for next year. And if you want him. Yeah, if you want him. But you're not going to make a deal for a second baseman for a half a season. He's jammed, and that's hit down to the second baseman. Franco, and he makes the play on Fernandez. So we're seeing quite a game here by Scott Bales and Todd Stottlemyer. A couple of young pitchers, no score. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Tom Spencer, who managed five years in the Cubs organization, coaching down at first, and Johnny Goral spent 20 years in the Minnesota organization. This is his seventh straight year as the third base coach for the Cleveland Indians. Leading it off, the catcher, Andy Allenson. Who had a few things to say to Mike Flanagan last night. Told Flanagan he didn't throw that hard, hard enough to hurt him. I wonder what he thinks about Stottlemyre. I think he'll say he could hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> 252, a couple of homers, 22 RBIs for the big catcher. Andy Allenson, 6'5", 215. Flanagan brushed him back in the third inning last night after Gruber and Homer and both benches emptied. No punch is thrown. Detroit and Baltimore. They are tied up at one. It's Tanana on the mound for Detroit. Tibbs going for Baltimore. And Boston. How about those Red Sox leading the Yankees tonight? Three to nothing. Boyd on the mound for Boston. Al Leiter, the left-hander, pitching for the Yankees. Boyd did not look very good against the Blue Jays, did he? Well, he's just regaining strength. You know, we talked about Cerrone wanting Boyd to throw more fastballs. Boyd, after that shoulder surgery, trying to get confidence that he can throw a fastball. It'll take a while for him to get his strength back. Looks like he's staked to a pretty good lead tonight. The 2-2 pitch just misses on the inside. Don Myers giving up two hits, a gift to Franco in the first inning. A line drive that went over the head of Lloyd Mosby. There's a fly ball deep to left field. Bell going back to the fence. It's out of here. A home run for Andy Allenson. what happens you run the count full he sits back and waits for that fastball well Stottlemyre got out ahead of Andy Allenson but then couldn't put him away and 3-2 leading off the third inning he gets a fastball and that ball carries as we were talking about I don't think it was hit that well Bell just keeps drifting and it keeps going and going and going you can just see that it. it just makes it over the left field fence Fastball, full count. Allenson just standing there swinging. And I guess that's what he thinks of Stottlemyre's fastball. Bell gives a nice effort, but just out of his reach. And old Franco steps in. Now it's important for Stottlemyre to regroup, come right back, get his composure, and throw strikes again. He can't let that rattle. Well, you know he's held the opposition to three earned runs or less in seven of his eight starts. Ground ball to Manny Lee. And that'll bring up Willie Upshaw. For his seven and two record, you're right. He hasn't thrown that badly. Early in two and seven. Two and yeah. seven. That's right. But he hasn't thrown that badly. Three runs in seven of his starts. He just didn't get that offensive support that might have gotten him off to a seven and two start but he was throwing well and still is they said that allenson's home run carried 391 feet the ex blue jay willie upshaw go for three last night he flied out to Barfield right at the wall in the first inning. Eight years and 74 days in the Major League for the Blue Jays. 11 years in the organization. Some great memories for that man and for Blue Jay fans. Big year in 83. 
27 home runs. First Blue Jay to drive in 100 in the season. Well, Pat Gillick actually picked the pocket of the Yankees when he drafted Willie Upshaw. He picked the pocket on McGriff. Upshaw. Did a pretty good job with Garcia. He's had pretty good success with the Yankees. Garth Orge is another. Round ball, one hopper right at McGriff. He loses it, flips it over, and he's out of there. Stottlemyre covering on the play. And Upshaw's got pretty good speed. McGriff really shows a lot of composure here. He knocks this hot shot down. Now watch him. He can't find the ball, but he calmly goes back, picks it up, and fires a strike to Stottlemyre covering the, covering the bag. Nice play by a couple of young Blue Jays. Pretty good athletes, both of them. They sure are. Joe Carter, the center fielder, popped up to McGriff in the first inning. Slams that one foul. The Labatt's player of the game for Cleveland will receive the new Canon Sure Shot Multi Tele with the auto retractable wide and tele autofocus lens. This fully automatic camera loaded with extras is available now. The Canon Sure Shot Multi Tele. Breaking ball that Carter fouls back. So Stottlemyre ahead of the count, 0 and 2. Stottlemyre now is going to have to finish off Carter in the next couple of pitches. That's pretty good. Go right after him. Second strikeout for Stottlemyre. So the Cleveland Indians on a home run by Andy Allenson take a 1-0 lead. You're watching Labatt Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN update. As usual, Johnny McLaren and Billy Smith down in third and first. Doing the coaching for manager Jimmy Williams. As Lloyd Mosby, who flied out in the first inning, will lead things off here in the fourth for Toronto. The Blue Jays have yet to get a base hit off the left-hander Scott Bales. Bales would have a perfect game going, except for an error by the shortstop Ron Washington on a ground ball hit by Manny Lee in the third inning. Fergie, are we getting older? Does this young man look like a teenager? 25 years old. Very promising future ahead of him. Big breaking slider. Mosby fly to left his first time up back in the first. Oh, look out. That'll do a lot to enhance your slider. <laughs> <laughs> Good pass ball in off the plate. He's our guest on Extra Innings tonight. Blue Jay manager Jimmy Williams. There's the number to call. Mark it down. 445-1811. Give us a call to life. Here's the 1-1 pitch on the breaking ball that's high. Jimmy looked like he was really studying bales out on the mound then. Trying to see... Maybe if he tipped off himself that he was throwing at Mosby. Good rip at a fastball, but just fouled it straight back. I thought Flanagan did a credible job last night. You know, the Indians are 14 and 1 against left handers this year. Four walks yeah, hurt him. That's what hurt him. That's what got him into trouble. Two times in a row he's had trouble with his control. That's chopped down to Jacoby, the third baseman, and he fires it across for upshot. Bring up Jesse Barfield. These Indians, you know, for years we've been coming in here saying if they only had some pitching. Well, brother, they've got it now. They've got plenty of it. They just acquired Brett Black to shore up the bullpen at this time, and they're talking about put, putting him into the rotation. And Doug Jones got his 13th save last night as Barfield pops that up. Franco out in the shallow right field. Two down. But Doug Jones has made a big, big difference to this pitching staff. Anytime you have a guy like Doug Jones save 13 games for you, come in and get both right-handers and left-handers out. It's a big plus. That's Lasky down in the bullpen. Jones down there with bullpen coach Louis Isaac. Bullpen has been shored up a bit with Bud Black. 
But boy, Doug Jones has been the difference to this point. Now George Bell steps in. He hits that down to Washington, who's been a busy man tonight. Three up, three down. And Bales does it again. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. One nothing, the Indians leading on Allison's home run. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. On up from Hagersville, Ontario, it says Ivan send money. But right there in the middle it says, hi, Steph. Well, Steph is our Stephanie Williams, who took sick in Boston. She's our associate director. And Steph, we know you're at home resting tonight, watching this telecast. A lot of people care about you. And Everybody says better. hi, Steph. Awfully darn quick. Yep. A ground ball hit by Jacoby out in the center field for a base hit. Jacoby's glad the Blue Jays are in town. He's four for four so far. Solid single. And that'll bring up Mel Hall. All slide out in the second. Four hits for the Indians off Stottlemyre. That's inside, moves him off the plate. Mel Hall hit just 200 against the Blue Jays last year. Did not get a hit last night. Base hit, right field. Barfield comes in, will make the play, and Jacoby will stay at second. You know, it's interesting as the Indians get a couple of hits to start the fourth inning with Corey Snyder coming up to bat. Charlie Manuel, the batting instructor, talked to me earlier in the day. He says, you know, our club is funny this year. We always hit in one inning. We'll get a lot of hits in one inning as you look at Mel Hall's liner to right field. But we can't string together some continuity. We'll have a hot inning, and then we might not get hits for five or six innings. The other day in Detroit, they got nine hits in the first two innings, and then they didn't get another hit until the ninth. So they've been a streaky club, and that might not be a good sign for the Blue Jays here in the fourth inning as Jacoby and Hall start things off with a couple of singles. Corey Snyder on a five-game hitting streak. They get a sharp one hopper back to Stottlemyre, and Stottlemyre blows this one by him. The book on Snyder is fastballs up. You got to throw that fastball up to him. And probably the number one indicator of that is Snyder's problems with Roger Clemens. He's faced him nine times prior to this year. He struck out nine times. That high fastball gives him a lot of trouble. Fly ball, right field. It's right at Barfield. Jacoby will tag. And the throw by Barfield misses Manny Lee, but Fernandez grabs it. So the Indians with one down have runners at the corners. And that'll bring up the DH, Dave Clark. Jimmy Williams, Galen Sisko, watching the thing, things develop here. Stottlemyre now looking for that double play ball. Runners at the corners, first and third, one out. Dave Clark. He's singled in the second. Broken bat single over shortstop. Stottlemyre jammed him. Now he just needs to jam him on the ground, try to get that ground ball that'll lead to a double play. Big, strong kid. 25, 62. He's been pounds. a subject of a lot of trade talk. Everybody that comes to the Indians wants to talk about Dave Clark. Had that big year at Buffalo last year where he hit 340. 30 home runs. Youngster has a lot of promise, only 25 years old. And they want to talk about Dave Clark as a possible candidate for trade. The Indians don't want to talk about it, but the other teams do. Outside. I'm sure when the people talk trade the Indians, they point out the fact that you got Hall, Snyder, Carter. You don't need Clark. 
Rob Kittle was saying before the game, I just wish they let me play every day. He says, I'd, I'd hit them 35 or 40 dingers. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Took a little off that, and here comes the runner. Stottlemyre can't make the play. Jacoby scores. Stottlemyre was going to scoop that ball to Pat Borders at the plate with his glove, and the ball didn't bounce up. Beats, beats it right off home plate. Now watch as he takes his glove back. He's going to try to scoop it, but the ball didn't bounce. Jacoby scores easily. Clark will get a base hit. He might have a shot if there's a bounce there, but there's no bounce. He might have been better advised to try with his bare hand and flip it. He had plenty of time. Now Galen Sisko is out to talk to Stottlemyre. Indians leading two to nothing. That's Six a, hits. In between play. But on that play, your only play is to home. You know you're not going to turn two. Obviously, probably don't have a shot at the guy at first. So he came in, thought about scooping it with his glove. Sisko out there to remind him only given up a couple of runs get that ground ball now with runners at first and second we'll get out of this inning Ron Washington's the hitter a perfect double play candidate notice how he hustles to the plate at 36 he has not stopped hustling and a big part of this game Ronnie Washington just happy for the opportunity to be playing He's been contributing, too. He's out there playing, filling in, making the good plays in the field. Singles last night. Lined it to left field. Base hit. Mel Hall comes around. He'll score. Clark in the third. The play, they get him. The throw by Bell. Nailed Dave Clark. Boy, what a throw by Bell. Perfect right on throw. Money. What? It's even more amazing. Watch how he has to reach back for this ball. He almost overruns it. Reaches back, gets his balance, and fires a strike to third base. Groover puts the tag on. Picture perfect. Rick Reed. Watch now. He hit the ball out of Groover's hands. His, ump his out signal hit Groover right on the hand. But Dave Clark out going first to third. Great throw by George Bell. But the Indians come up with another run here in the fourth inning. Allenson, the catcher, who homered in the third inning. Three to nothing, Cleveland leading. Inside. Warming up in the bullpen, Mark Ross, the 30-year-old minor league veteran who was brought up yesterday from Syracuse. Been in the Houston organization. Been up with Pittsburgh for a cup of coffee. Stottlemyre sent a little message after Allison's home run. Allison with a good cut. We got a little attitude going here between the Indians and the Blue Jays already this season. Indians playing good baseball. Allison done a fine job for them behind the plate, leading this pitching staff. He's a leader behind the plate. He wants time now to get set in here. Facing Stottlemyre. John Hurst back to home plate umpire. Washington gets back at second as Fernandez over on the pickoff attempt. Washington, big base hit. He's having a pretty good run out of here in the first two days of this series. A couple of RBIs got hit with the bases loaded in last night's game. And then a single right there. Drove in Mel Hall. There goes Fernandez again, and Washington is back. I think that ball caught Fernandez on the thumb. And take his glove off and get some feeling back in his thumb. Sometimes when you catch a ball up on the thumb part of your glove, it'll twist your thumb back. Well, I'll tell you, that was a big play by Bell and left, wasn't it? He threw that ball on the money. They would have had runners in second and third with just one down. Now there's two out. Washington at second.
A ball and two strikes to Allenson. Well, we talked about the Indians getting all their hitting in one inning. They've had four singles in this fourth inning. Counted for two runs to this point. If Stottlemyer can get Allenson out, maybe that'll be all the damage the Indians can muster. That home run hit by Allenson was Stottlemyer's sixth that he's given up this season in 50 innings. Porters gave a hard target. Stottlemyer overthrew that a little bit. Really missed upstairs. Two and two. Williams and Cisco. Once again, looking on concern. They've got Ross throwing down in the bullpen. Called up yesterday to take over for Jose Nunez, who was placed on the DL. Took a little off that Groomer. What a play. Leaps for that line drive and stabs it. So the Cleveland Indians score two here in the fourth inning and take a 3 nothing lead. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Left-hander Scott Bale. Pitching hitless ball through the first four. He has struck out one. Faced 13 batters. Manny Lee got on with an air in the third inning. So he has done a superb job so far for the Cleveland Indians. McGriff, Gruber, and Fielder here in the fifth inning for Toronto. Who trail three to nothing. Well, we know about the Blue Jays and left-handers, and they're seeing a tough left-hander tonight. 7 and 14 against left-handed starters. Bales made four appearances against the Blue Jays last year. Beat Clancy twice, 14 to 5 and 3 to nothing. Had a no decision and a start here. And also pitched an inning of relief. Bales is just effectively wild. You saw that fastball up and in to McGriff. Now watch for that breaking pitch. There it is. Fly ball, left field. Bell Hall going back. And he'll wait for it. Breaks the pitch. But Bales brushed, moved McGriff off the plate and dropped that slider on him. And boy, it's tough for a hitter to go out there and really have a good swing at a breaking pitch after the pitcher has threw one up around the letters. That'll bring up Kelly Gruber. And he popped up to Willie Upshaw in the second. Of those extra base hits, 26 of them for Gruber. Seems to me the grip is tied for the league lead with 28. So the Gruber or Gruber is right there. Way out in front. No balls, two strikes. Change up in a slider. center field Carter calls for it. Bales is in a groove everything he throws is a strike right now got a lot of confidence wants to work quickly Cecil Fielder grounded out to Washington Cecil just slowly getting on track isn't he Starting to swing a little better. Get a few more at bats and Juan Benitez has been released. Five hits in his last ten at bats. Homered off Higuera last week in Toronto. Bruce Hurst in Boston. And his only other home run hit off a very tough left-hander, John Candelaria. That hits the plate. It's a fair ball. Now it rolls foul. Jacoby read that one perfectly. Look at Cecil saying, man, that was a hit. I was running like crazy. With my speed, I got down there and would have had an infield hit if he'd have picked it up, which very <laughs> seldom happens to that big fella. But Jacoby, of course, knows this Cleveland infield. He saw where it hit, said, I don't have a shot at him at first, and I think it's going to go foul, so let's let it roll. Cecil's going to take some time to take a deep breath after that 90 foot sprint down the first base. Bales with a no hitter. Two down here in the fifth inning. A ball and 
two strikes to Fielder. Bales has been ahead of just about every Blue Jay hitter yep. tonight. Good slider on the hands, and Fielder just fought it off. So many times we've talked about the fact when a pitcher is ahead going strike one, it gives him so many options. He can use all of his pitches that way. Hitters can't lay back and look for that fastball. They're in between. They're not sure what they're going to see from the pitcher. Try to get Fielder to chase a high fastball, but he laid off. One thing about it with Manique has gone. Cecil knows now that he's the man. 2-2 pitch is low. You know, Fielder's only 24 years yeah. old. He's been here since 85. Everybody thinks he's a little bit older than that, so he's just learning a little bit about himself as a hitter. Well, he had 200 at bats last year and hit 14 home runs. Fly ball, left field. Mel Hall calls for it. What a job for the left-hander Scott Bales. A no-hitter going through five innings of play. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Julio Franco, the Indians look like a different ball club this year. They're much more relaxed. They're playing good baseball. How much does Doc Edwards have to do with that? Well, Doug is a nice guy, and he just let us play and play up to our potential. But the main thing in the club is the good attitude and enthusiasm. Uh, the defense has been there. We've always been able to hit, and the pitching has improving a lot. So I think it's one of the, the best things that happened to us. Stottlemyre still on the mound. 3 0 Cleveland leading. Scott Bale so far. Uh, no hitter going. Franco, fly ball, center field. Mosby will wait for it. He one hands it. Doc Edwards has certainly had this Indians ball club relaxed. He took over July 19th of last year. Pat Corrales, the previous manager, and Doc Edwards has really told his charges, listen, go out there and have fun. You've got a lot of talent. We're going to improve our pitching. We're going to improve our defense a little bit, and I'm confident we'll hit. A strike to Upshaw, who's 0 for 2 tonight. Willie flied out in the first inning to Barfield and then hit a sharp hopper to McGriff down there at first to bobble the ball and finally got it to Stottlemyre who was covering at first. Well, hopefully Charlie Manuel, the Indian batting instructor, was right when he told me, hey, our ball club only hits in one inning. Hopefully that's the fourth inning when they put together four hits and two runs. A ball and two strikes. Pops it up, but it looks like it'll stay in play. It does as Gruber makes the call. A little bit of a breeze that's picked up. Now kept that ball fair. Play field. New York and Montreal this Friday night, 7.30 Eastern Time, and we'll be in Detroit Thursday, June the 16th at 7.30. The Tigers and the Blue Jays, what a great rivalry that is. Those are always fun. Two down as Carter hits one to Barfield in right. Three up, three down for Stottlemyre. And through five innings of play here in Cleveland, Indians still lead three to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN update. This update brought to you by Speedy Muffler King. At Speedy, you're a somebody, 110% guaranteed. Welcome back to Toronto. I'm Michael Landsberg. Let's take a look now at the Philadelphia Phillies in Montreal to take on the Expos. And the Phillies are hitting Neil Heaton real hard. This is Juan Samuel over the left field fence, or at least the ball that he hit went over there. Four to one for the Phillies. In the bottom of the second, though, Tim Raines, who led off the uh, 
game with a home run in the second inning, has an RBI base hit to left field, so that's good news for the Expos, but here is the bad news. It is now 7-2 to two in the third inning of play. Now let's go to Baltimore, where it's the Orioles and the Detroit Tigers. Sparky's Tigers are 16-11 and 11 on the road, and they have a great chance to improve playing the Orioles, but Eddie Murray cashes in Cal Ripken. It's 1-0 in the first. The Tigers, though, tied in the second. Alan Trammell is on second base, and Chester Lemon is at the plate, and he bounces one just through the right side. That scores the run, and that makes it a 1-1 baseball game in the fourth. Don't forget, Sports Desk comes up at 11 Eastern time. Sixth inning here in Cleveland as Scott Bales right now, the left-hander, is pitching a no-hitter. Blue Jay fans will remember Len Barker back in 1981 who pitched a no-hitter against the Blue Jays. And there's been lots of no-hitters pitched by Cleveland pitchers over the years. Len Barker, Dennis Eckersley, Dick Bosman, Feller, Bob Feller three times, Sonny Siebert. Borders pops that up in the infield, Franco. The Labatt player of the game for Toronto will receive the 14-watt AMFM 3D Super Woofer with auto-reverse double cassette and high-speed dubbing. Just one of a full line of 3D radios from Hitachi. The way these Jays are going tonight, Buck, we might have a tough time giving this one away. <laughs> if Bales keeps doing what he's doing out there. Manny Lee is oh, What a play. What a play. Ronnie Washington. Doc Edwards looks like a genius, doesn't he? He put Washington in there two nights in a row. And what a couple of great games at shortstop Washington has had. This has base hit written all over it. Washington knows what's going on. What a great play. Manny Lee hits it hard. Looks like it's headed into center field, but Ronnie Washington, outstanding play. I like the way that guy plays. I just like to see him hustle. The fact that he's a veteran. And I tell you, he's a pleasure to talk yeah. to because he enjoys playing baseball. Jay Bell is their regular shortstop, and he hasn't been hitting. Fernandez. At least he was. <laughs> Imagine Doc Edwards is going to let Ronnie Washington play for a day or two. Fernandez flied out and grounded out. Boy, that gives a team a big boost when you get a defensive play like that. Especially everybody when the guy's on, got a no hitter. Going. Everybody on the field knows there's a no hitter going. Nobody will talk about it. Guys will stay away from the pitcher. The catcher won't go near him. Everybody just kind of goes about their own direction. Nobody says, hey, nice going, way to throw the ball or anything. They just forget about it. The only base runner back in the third inning, Manny Lee got on with an error to Washington, the shortstop. A throw that was high. Jacoby, and they get Fernandez through six. The no-hitter still going. You can tell the fans know what's going on as they give Bales a standing ovation at the end of six. You're watching Lamette's Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. They will not say a word to Scott Bales. They will avoid him like the plague. He's sitting there like that that's going on, huh? Yeah. Just another game. Hi, Mom, he says. <laughs> He's dying to talk to somebody else in there. Yeah, he's talking to his mom. Wonder if she's in Canada. <laughs> Todd Stottlemyre not having much luck. He's given up seven hits. And his teammates have been no hit through six innings. The big blow was the home run by catcher Andy Allenson in the third inning on a three and two count. Up to Barfield in right. And that'll bring up Mel Hall, the Orioles. Blue Jay fans will finally get to see those Orioles. 
in Toronto Monday, June the 20th for a four game series. In Baltimore behind the hitting of Cal Ripken beat Detroit. Ripken with four hits in his 10th home run. Looks like he's starting to hit, wouldn't you know it? He'll get hot and maybe even Eddie Murray will start to hit now that he's facing the Blue Jays soon. Murray's just been moved to the DH spot. Frank Robinson finally saying, hey, I want to see Tabler play a little first base. We're not going anywhere anyway. I saw where Murray, there's, that's hit out in the left field, down in the corner, Bell can't get to it, bounces in front. Hall will head for second. The throw, he is in there, Call safe. He might be hurt too. He went in there awfully hard and very late. And that could be a shoulder problem. Head first slide into the bag. And right on top, Bell makes another fine throw. Remember, he threw out Clark at third base, trying to go first to third. Watch Manny Lee's tag. See how quickly he gets it down. The hall comes in there. Whoa. Kind of like a crash landing, not a slide on both knees. This is a four-point landing. Hands and knees. Boom, right down there. Wow, that was tough. Manny Lee drops the ball, as we see on the replay, but no smiling. Captain Mel Hall is going to get some static when he gets back to that bench for that slide. <laughs> that, wasn't, it. that wasn't too pretty. <laughs> I tell you, you got to laugh at yourself when those things happen. Corey Snyder, the hitter. Snyder 0 for 2 tonight. can hold on he's still got nine more outs to record for a no hitter a lot of things can happen Ronnie Washington great defensive play on the drive by Manny Lee up short stop there it says it all right there no run no hit for the Blue Jays through six innings fly ball right field Barfield heading back to the track He's there to make the catch. Hall will tag and head for third. He won't have to slide on that play. And he's happy about that. Look at him explaining it to John Gorrell. Listen, I was coming in there, and all of a sudden I just Didn't know went down on my hands hand. and knees. He's lucky he didn't come away injured. <laughs> now Dave Clark. He's got two hits in tonight's ball game. And an RBI. Stottlemyre wants to talk to Fred McGriff. McGriff played against Clark in the minor leagues. Wants to talk to him about pitching to him, possibly to make sure that they're all thinking along the same lines. You remember Clark? played last year in Buffalo and the year before, so Freddie McGriff would have played with it two years ago. There's a fastball right by Clark. So Stottlemyre got a couple outs here. Mel Hall down at third base. Double down the left field corner. This is high and away. He was it up with a ball and a strike. And I see where Todd's brother, Mel Jr., is undergone rotator cuff surgery for the second time. He was with the Houston organization and now in the Kansas City organization, so that's a tough break for him. And they say he was throwing the ball pretty well. He's with the Royals, and I heard good things out of him in spring training that he was throwing well and a lot of promise. A ball and two strikes to Dave Clark. Two down, sixth inning. Oh, and Borders just saved a run. Yep. 
And Hall down there at third. It's a tough pitch. That 55-foot curveball bounces in front of home plate. You're not really sure where it's going to end up, but Porter's a great position. Hands and knees covering up all the holes and went down chest protector. Watch how his knees flare out. His glove goes in between there and his chest protector keeps the ball in front of him. Textbook block. Straight back. So the Cavill remains two and two. You know, sometimes you get a little hesitant to call that curveball with a guy down at third base, thinking, oh, if he throws a wild pitch and he gets away from me, it'll lead to a run. But Borders has enough confidence that he can block those balls. Change up, and Clark beats it off his foot. But you know, that's a tribute to how much Borders has advanced in a very short time as a catcher. John Sullivan worked so hard with the catchers all spring long, and young Pat Borden's done a great job of learning. Seems to be more comfortable each time he gets found there. There's Sully and one of his former students, Ernie Witt, the old-timer down there, looking on. Now to Dave Clark. Tomorrow night, Rich Yet will go against Jim Clancy. Clancy at three and six. Yet four and three, and Clancy will be pitching on three days rest. It's a good sign. A change up on the full count. Remember it shows Allison, who sat on that fastball and hit that home run? Well, it shows that Stottlemyre's thinking, too, because Clark's a left-handed batter. He's got first base unoccupied, and he's got a right-handed hitter in Ron Washington on deck. So he doesn't have to come in there with a fastball. Puts another pitch in Clark's mind. And he gets him. That changeup set up that strikeout. Clark was behind that good fastball from Stottlemyre. The third strikeout for Stottlemyre tonight. As the Cleveland Indians behind the pitching, the no-hit pitching of Scott Bales, lead this one three to nothing. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. There's the line score that tells it all. Scott Bales through six. Is pitching a no-hitter. Only one runner got on. That was Manny Lee in the third inning on an error. Charged to the shortstop, Ron Washington. Mosby, Barfield, and Bell will have another shot at Bales. Washington atoned for that error by taking a base hit away from Manny Lee on a diving catch of a line drive. Fastball for a strike. Well, as you've seen all night long, Bales has continually gotten ahead of hitters. Boy, that's a nasty breaking pitch. The Yankees have come back in that one. Boston was leading three to nothing with the Yankees with four in the bottom of the second. Detroit and Baltimore still tied at one. Ahead, 0 and 2. Yes, Mosby. Breaking pitch. Atro Mosby. Three tough pitches. And the last one, boy, just gave a wave at. Boy, it broke well off the plate. Strikeout number two for Bale. Now Barfield, who has popped up twice. Jesse with just five hits in his last 31 plate appearances. Came into this game hitting 152 off left-handers. Just seven hits this season. It doesn't get any better, does it, for Mr. Barfield? He just can't seem to get untracked. We've talked about him being a streaky hitter, and boy, one of those streaks sure be a welcome sight. Fly ball. Carter. Broke in, and now he'll wait for it. Two down.
You can feel the tension building around the stadium as the players all know Carter came in hard on that ball, wanted to make sure he got to it, and then he had to re go back. He realized he'd overran it a little bit. Indian fans, they know what's going on. Well, if there's anybody in this Blue Jay lineup that's going to break it up, it's this man right here, George Bell. for a strike slow curveball over for a strike fastball he's really mixed his pitches well Blue Jay hitters can't look for one particular pitch get down the line just foul so right you ever hear a foul ball cause so much tension as that last one <laughs> everybody in the ballpark went oh so he's ahead no balls two strikes Change up, hit out in the shallow right field. Franco back, He's, he bobbles it. Bell will hustle. And he's at second. Now, how do you score that? Do you give Franco an error on that? At home, I think they're gonna give him an error. Yep. You know, he really kind of nonchalant yep. it, and that's his style, I know. But it's a pop-up. Should be caught. Now watch, he just kind of coasts back there and just puts the glove out and says, I got it. Hits him on the heel of the glove. They got to throw an air up there just because it's at home. Yeah, they did. I don't think too many people can argue with that. Air second baseman. Now Freddie McGriff will step in. He fell down there at second. You know what we might see? If somebody gets a hit afterwards, they might switch that one to a hit. I don't think it was a tough, tough play for Franco. I think he could have caught the ball, and I think he would tell you he should have caught the ball. But he ran a long ways for it. That was the same type of ball that cost Jim Clancy a perfect game. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Randy Bush hit that broken, right center, though. broken bat blooper over Damo Garcia's head. Two balls and no strikes to McGriff. Did that break any hearts? I know it broke mine. I was catching. Yeah. Blown away. So this is the first time that he's been free and all. is going to go out and scream at him. Let's go. He knows what he's doing out there. He's pitching a no-hitter. <laughs> What's he trying to do? He just wants him to get back in the groove and throw strikes again, and that's exactly what he should do. He goes out there and says, listen, three balls and no strikes. You haven't been there all night long. Did that hit his helmet? It did. And he's on. Hit him right in the helmet on ball four, and Fred went out there as if to say, what's going on? But that was just the ball that got away from him. He lost all his control. Mark Wiley will come out. Just catches him on the helmet. Fred ducks out of the way. A glancing bowl didn't catch him that flush. Now watch Bale's reaction. Can't believe that happened. Certainly not throwing it, but Griff, 3-0, and, oh, and Wiley wisely going out there and Talk to his young left-hander saying, hey, what's going on here? You've been strike one all night long. Allenson, in his very gentle way, says, yeah. come on, you jerk, throw a strike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He said, Bales should just tell him to take a hike and get back behind the plate. Bales just looked over at McGriff and said, hey, man, I'm sorry. I wasn't throwing at you. You know that, but I'm sorry you got hit in the head. Nobody likes to see anybody get hit in the head, no matter what the count is. Now, Kelly Gruber. Whoa, he hits a rope, but it's foul. Well, the wind has picked up somewhat here, I think. Yeah, like a little cool breeze. Maybe a thunderstorm way out there in the distance because there's certainly some 
fresh air coming around now. Well, they said earlier today there's a chance of some rain tonight. Two down, seventh inning. Bill, uh, Bell at second, McGriff at first, and Gruber the hitter. by Allenson, breaking pitch in the dirt. You know, one swing by Gruber, hit it, no hitter could be gone, shutout could be gone, and we could have a tie game. He's a potential tying run at home plate. He had a homer in last night's ball game off John Farrell. Well, a bullet down the third base line is foul. He's getting a pretty good look at the left-hander Bales right now. Gerber's average hits at 307. Bales, the first jam of the night. That's Bell at second, McGriff at first. Two outs here, top of the seventh. He still has not given up a hit. Oh, we threw that ball a little bit. There will be bedroom in this place if he strikes out. Gets Gruber to ground out or fly up. He's jammed, but fouls it. Well, I remember that night back in May of 81 when Glenn Barker was on the mound. I was the hitter. Two outs, top of the ninth. Body Maddox pitch it for me. Ernie made the last out. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it was Barker tough that night. <laughs> hit in the right field. It's going to drop in. Base hit. Bell will come around and score. McGriff at third base. Slides easy in there, and Gruber safe at second. A three to one ball game, and Cecil Fielder will be the hitter. All of a sudden, the attention shifts from no hitter to winning the game as the potential tying run is down at second base in the person of Kelly Gruber. So Scott Bales, an outstanding performance. Kelly Gruber inside out the pitch in the right field. Snyder comes hard, but it falls in front of him, and he fires all the way to third base. <laughs> McGriff going first to third. Jacoby can't get the ball out of his glove here as Gruber slides into second base. Good base running by the Blue Jays to put the potential tying run at second base. There you see the setup. McGriff at third. Gruber at second for Cecil Fielder. Base hit ties it. Cecil tonight grounded out to the shortstop and flied out to Mel Hall in left field. Three to one. Hit in the left field, base hit. McGriff will score. The ball gets by Mel Hall. Now Cecil, he will at least head to third. Anybody with some speed might have had an inside the park home run. Cecil Fielder. This game is tied. Mel Hall charging hard, trying to throw out the runner at the plate. Forgot to come up with the ball. He knew it was going to be tough with Gruber on second, but Fielder gets a breaking pitch and pulls it down the line in left field. Watch how Hall comes charging hard and just doesn't get down and get it. Now he's got to go all the way back to the fence and retrieve it. And as you pointed out, Fergie, anybody with any speed might have been all the way around there. But right now, Fielder is thrilled. <laughs> with you know, a John McClary told him, he said, there's home plate out there. He said, I forget that. I was stopping here for a rest. <laughs> so it is tied at three. What a comeback by the Blue Jays. A harmless little ball hit by George Bell out in the right field that, as Buck pointed out, Franco sort of nonchalanted it. The Bales would have been out of this inning. Hit into center field by Borders right at Joe Carter. 
So this game is all tied up. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. What a ball game. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Through six and two thirds, that man right there, Scott Bales, had a no hitter going. And then Bell, he got on, an error charged to Frankel, the second baseman. He hit Freddie McGriff, three balls and no strikes, hit him in the helmet. And then Groover singled to right. Cecil Fielder then singled to left. Mel Hall displayed the ball. Two runs scored. They would have scored anyway, I think. And this game is tied at three. But what a tough break for Bale. And what a good break for this man right here. Stop Byron needs some runs. Yep. I tell you. He pitched tough. That fourth inning gave up a couple of runs on four hits. And then he settled in. There's some action in the Blue Jays bullpen. Mark Ross is back up. John Cerruti, the left-hander. We should be in Dwayne Ward territory. Ron Washington struck out in the second, single in the fourth. A strike by Stottlemyre. Now Ward is up. Nice call, Bert. <laughs> Ross is down. Well, 3-3 uh, three, three ball game. The seventh inning. You don't use the guy that they just called up from the minor leagues. And you don't know what he throws. That's right. <laughs> so they're going to get Ward up. Ward's done a good job for him. He's got four saves. Of course, the big guy's down there, too, Tom Hickey. I said to David Wells before the game, can you pitch tonight? He said, no. We won't be counting on Wells. Pretty much either. to the point, huh? Yep. So Cerruti's down there. Rick Leach, bat in his hand. There's Hank. There's Hank. A high chopper to McGriff, and he'll make the unassisted put out on Washington. That'll bring up Andy Allenson, the catcher, who homered back in the third inning. and got a 3-2 fastball from Stottlemyre and started the scoring here tonight with that home run over to the left center field fence. His third of the year. Fouls back at fastball. Allenson only hit one home run in a 293 at bats in 86 last year and just 154. He hit three. So you can see that he's getting a little more comfortable and bringing that bat with a little more authority. A chopper down to Fernandez. You know, memory serves me correctly. I have not got the figures here in front to, uh, to prove it, but this inning has always been the toughest inning for Stottlemyre because I remember out in Seattle, he had a perfect game going for six and a third. And then he gave up a hit. They brought him out as Galen Sisko looks on and uh, keeping a, a close eye on Stottlemyre right now. A couple of other starts he got into the sixth inning. Look at Franco. When Franco walked up here, they booed him. I don't think it was that bad a play. He went out there. He's always been nonchalant, one-handed style. That ball just caught him on the heel of the glove. But it began a three-run rally in the top of the seventh. I thought Stottlemyre overthrew that last pitch. Looked like he put a little extra on it. Okay, you got to admire his composure. For a young guy out there, he was down three to nothing and has kept his ball club in, giving him a chance to get back in the ball game, and now he's pitching in a tie game. Great changeup. That's a good pitch. If in fact what you said was accurate that he was overthrowing, now Borders comes back, calls a changeup, and that will just make you follow through and smooth out that delivery a little bit. It was Franco who hit a line drive in the first inning that Mosby, the center fielder, misjudged and went over his head for a double. Fernandez. Two down. For the third out, I'm sorry, Allenson was out of there as well. So Stottlemyre's done a nice job through seven innings. It's tied at three. 
You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Manny Lee will lead it off for the Blue Jays. Eighth inning, this game is tied at three. Fernandez and Mosby, the left-hander Scott Bale, giving up just two hits. Blue Jays scoring all three runs in the seventh inning. Manny Lee got on an air in the third and hit a line shot at Washington and made a great catch. Jimmy Williams, our extra innings guest tonight. 445-1811. Think of your questions and give us a call. Did he go around? Yes, he did. So Bale's ahead, no balls and two strikes. Man, he's hit the ball hard twice tonight. A couple of times right at the shortstop. Washington made an error on the first one in the third inning and then took a hit away from Lee. Ground ball, Washington, one hands it, turns, and bounces it to Upshaw. He couldn't hold on to it, so Manny Lee is on. It's a tough play going up the middle. And Short they, hop, Willie Upshot, first base. Washington shows good range as he goes behind the bag, but then the off-balance throw is wide of the mark at first in the dirt. They're going to give Washington an error on that. Can't come up with it. So Manny Lee's hit the ball hard three times tonight. Nothing to show for it. Second error for Washington. But Manny Lee is on, and that's what counts. Fernandez now in this tie ball game. What do you do with him? As Lee is down there at second. Want to move him over. He lays a bunt down. Allenson down the line. It's a fair ball. He fakes the throw to third and almost throws it wide at first to Franco. Good coverage in that play from our director, Michael Lansbury, right on the money. Fernandez gets the ball right on the plate. Now, Allenson's looking to third. He wants to make a throw, realizes he's not going to get Lee. Has to go to first. Nice play by Franco at first base. Allenson comes up with third base on his mind. Now he checks the runner, sees he can't get him. That takes tremendous control by a catcher to follow through like that, spin around, and make a throw like he did. Nice play by the catcher. Franco did a good job at first base catching that ball, but Allenson heads up play, sized things up down at third base, saw he couldn't get Lee, so he got the out at first base. Fernandez does his job and moves the runner to third for Lloyd Mosby. Mosby be looking for a fly ball. The infield's in. Mosby tonight, flied out of the first, grounded out of the fourth, and struck out of the seventh. There's the defense, Jacoby and Washington on the left side, in. Franco at second base, up shot first. They're gonna try to cut the runoff at the plate. And fly ball down the line, now Manny Lee will tag, Mel Hall coming in, Manny Lee fakes, Back to third as that throw is right there to Allenson. Bell Hall right on the foul line. Not that deep for a strike to home plate. Manny Lee had to go back to third. Jimmy Warfield, the Cleveland Indian trainer, is now going out to second base. Gonna check Julio Franco. Something I think we neglected to mention on that bell, a ball that Bell hit out into right field. That's you know, right. Franco playing with that injured knee. We forgot to mention the fact, and we frankly, I overlooked it, that Franco came out of the game yesterday with a bad knee. Had he been 100%, maybe he gets all the way back there. So my apology to Julio Franco. And in the He's tie ball game, knee. I don't think Doc Edwards wants to leave him in the ball game. He's going to take him out of there. You've got to admire yeah. Franco's determination. He just came from the hospital in x-rays. Jimmy Warfield mentioned that they're concerned about a clicking that's going on, and from time to time his knee will catch. But Franco wanted to be in this game tonight. Came right out, took a little BP, didn't take infield. 
unfortunately, the fans probably forgot also that he had come out of the game last night with a bad knee. So Jimmy Warfield alerted Doc Edwards. They went out to check Franco, and you got to tip your hat to Julio Franco as he tried to give it a go, but he's obviously not 100%. So Domingo Ramos will go in to play second. Last night he played admirably in the he field, sure replacing did. Franco when Julio came out in the fourth inning. He teamed up with Washington and turned a couple of double plays and made a good play on Rick Leach on the ball up the middle. He was 0 for 2 last night at the plate, but it was his defense that he got by with. So Barfield with Manny Lee down at third, two up, tied at three. He took a good rip at that one. You know the way Jesse is swinging right now. I don't know if I wouldn't try to drop a punt down the third baseline. Jacoby's way back at third. My ball that will go into the Indians' bullpen or up in behind it. Well, so much for that fun idea now with two strikes. But Jesse has done it in the past when he's been going through a tough spell trying to get a hit or two. But now let's see if he can battle a tough left-hander. And he's behind the eight ball right here. No balls, two strikes. The guard failed. David Wells. He was. Now he doesn't. What's his jacket on? Is he going to come into the he's game? He's coming into the game. He told me he wasn't going to pitch tonight. You've got but a great he's not the boss. Great relationship with David. <laughs> <laughs> Pitch is inside. Evens it up to two and two. Bales wanted it, but it was low. Yeah, maybe David Wells hadn't talked to Jimmy Williams and told him he couldn't pitch. Jimmy Williams obviously told David Wells he could pitch. Looks like he's coming into the game. A high chopper. Bales makes a nice play, and he'll make the putt out himself. He almost didn't get to that. Yeah, but he did get yeah. to it and <laughs> saved a run. Whoa. What a great play by the left-hander. Slow hit ball off the bat of Barfield. Could have put the Blue Jays ahead. We're heading to the bottom of the eighth, tied at three. You're watching Labatt's Blue Jays baseball on TSN. This pitching change brought to you by Skill. David Wells, the left-hander, who got his third win Friday in Boston. He went four and a third innings in relief of Jose Nunez. Gave up just two hits, a couple of earned runs. As a matter of fact, those two runs, the only two that he's given up in his last 14 appearances, dating back to May the 6th. Look at the numbers, 37 strikeouts, 42 and two-thirds. Wells is putting it together, getting a little work. Good velocity on his fastball, and that breaking pitch has been snapping. Jimmy Williams wants to have Wells come in here and face up Shaw. Well, he went four and a third Friday. Sunday worked two and two thirds. Gave up three hits, a walk, and a couple of strikeouts. A lot of innings. He's a young guy. He can handle it. that good velocity. Seems like he gets stronger all the time. Two balls, no strikes to Willie Upshaw. I think we're going to see this guy develop into one of the real fine pitchers in the American League. As long as his arms stay sound, ground ball, Manny Lee. Nice play. They get Upshaw. That's one thing that Manny Lee does. A little bit better than Nelson Liriano, and that's go up the middle. He can range behind the bag and stop and make a strong throw. Watch how quickly he stops, 
he has that strong arm but he's a little bit quicker with his feet defensively out there in the field that right shoulder is the one that's been bothering him Joe Carter the hitter 55 foot breaking ball Mark Eichhorn is up and throwing in the bullpen. Oh, and he had some problems last night. Hit a batter, a couple of box. Ground ball, Fernandez. He's up with it. Carter's out of there. Two down in the eighth inning. Third baseman, Brooke Jacoby, who's one for three, a single and scored a run in the fourth. It's a big game for the Blue Jays tonight. Red Sox coming to Toronto. Autograph series day. starting Friday, and of course Saturday is Autograph Day. That's Always a special a day, isn't time. it? Sure is. All you see a lot of fans. Oldsters too. Get those autograph books out. Time is game time. 1:35. When they usually have autograph session. What? 12 or 12:30? 12 12 30. Big turnout. Breaking ball low, Jacoby. Just three hits for the Blue Jays, eight for the Cleveland Indians. Went after a bad breaking pitch there as well. Came back to back with that curveball. Jacoby couldn't lay off. So we're heading to the ninth inning. This game is tied at three. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Now let's go to this TSN update. This update is brought to you by Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Welcome back to our TSN Control Center in Toronto. I'm Michael Landsberg. Coming up at 11 Eastern Time, we'll have sports desk for you. All the highlights from the day in sport. We'll scan the American League besides the Blue Jays. We'll take a look at the New York Yankees who are taking on the Boston Red Sox. And uh, in that one, we'll see if Billy Martin got into any uh, action with the umpires. As well, the National League and the Montreal Expos taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. We'll pick it up for you now. In the third inning, Philadelphia out in front, 4-2. to Tim Burke is in relief. Uh, Neil Heaton, and with the bases loaded, he is greeted by Mike Young, who uh, sends a sacrifice fly to right. Schmidt tags and scores. 5-2 for Philadelphia. Same inning. Bases loaded again. One Samuel. Base hit up the middle. That scores two. James and Bradley. It was 7-2 for Philadelphia. Four RBIs for Samuel at this point of the game. But in the fifth, the Expos come back. Cuby Brooks with a liner down the left field line. Casey Candell, just promoted, comes in to score. And that made it a 7-3 baseball game for the Philadelphia Phillies. The Expos have added two more in the sixth inning of play. It is Philadelphia leading by a score of 7-5. to five. Again, all the highlights on Sports Desk at 11 Eastern Time right now. A quick break, then the conclusion of the, Expo, the uh, Jays and the Indians. George Bell will lead it off for the Blue Jays here in the ninth inning in a tie ball game. The left-hander Scott Bale still out there pitching for Cleveland. Blue Jays, George Bell starts their three-run rally off of the seventh. Fly ball into right field, and Franco was charged with an error. Schatzader and Latsky warming up for the Cleveland Indians. Bell, a ground ball right back to Bale. Bales in command all night long. Wasn't touched until he gave up a single and a double back to back to Gruber and Fielder, which tied the score at three in the seventh. All coming with two outs. Now McGriff will try Bales. He pops it up. Carter coming in. Now the shortstop Washington calls everybody off. Two down. Some out-of-town scores. Detroit and Baltimore. 
They're tied at three. It's Tanana against Tibbs in that one. New York leading Boston four to three. The Yankees with four runs in the second. White Sox are tied at one. Lee and Perez in that one. And Kansas City leading Oakland. As Power against Young. Good job Power did in his last outing for Kansas City. A win. George Brett and Danny Tartable hit home runs for Kansas City. Pasqua has a home run for Chicago. With two down here in the ninth inning, we've got to start looking for our Labatt's players of the game, Buck. And this right there, you're looking consider. at one of them. Yes, he has <laughs> to be considered, that's for sure. Tesla Fielder, two out, two run double. Tied to score at three. Kelly Gruber got a base hit with an RBI. Down to Jacoby. Three up, three down for Scott Bales. We're heading to the bottom of the ninth inning. Still tied at three. You're watching the Bats Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Bottom of the ninth inning, tied at three. David Wells has come out for the ninth. He retired the side in, in order in the eighth. Stottlemyre started this game, went seven innings, gave up three runs, eight hits, struck out three, and didn't walk anybody, and that's a good sign. He looks sharp tonight. Yep. Some of those hits weren't hit that well. A couple broken back base hits. Gave up a home run to Allenson, but overall, I think it was a pretty good outing for Todd Stottlemyre. Allenson in the third and four hits in the fourth inning. Once again, only three runs and a start, so yep. that makes eight starts. Out of nine. Out of nine now. Yep. Good effort by that young man. Todd Stottlemyre kept his club in the ball game, gave him a chance to come back and tie it. Now Castillo will come in to pinch hit for Mel Hall. Castillo played in, in last night's game, started, played left field, and then was lifted for a pinch hitter, and that pinch hitter was Mel Hall. A platoon out there. He's 0 for 7 as a pinch hitter. The only player in this Cleveland lineup who's hitting over 300, just over 50 at bats. 0 for 2 last night as a starter. Good rip at that fastball, but fouled it straight back. And Wells has to concentrate here, not walking anybody. He has been absolutely magnificent. This is his 28th appearance of the season. That leads the Blue Jays staff. Good fastball inside to Castillo. Castillo, good fastball hitter. Now Dwayne Ward is up and throwing in the Blue Jay bullpen, and I'm sure if we head to the 10th inning, you'll see him. Jimmy Williams is going to push Wells any further than this inning. A ball and two strikes to Castillo. If they're going to throw the fastball, they got to crowd Castillo. Inside part of the plate. That's what they he do. He jammed. Gruber is deep at third. He's going to have a tough play. Bobbles the ball. I think it would have been a base hit anyway. That's right. That had base hit all over it because Gerber was back at third, protecting the line, guarding against the double. Way back at third base. Castillo is really jammed on this ball. Barely gets it to the grass. Gruber comes in. I don't think he had a shot anyway. But the Indians have the leadoff runner on. Look at that. Jammed right on the hand. They gave him a base hit. So now Corey Snyder. Do you go to Ward now, or do you have Wells pitch to Snyder? Snyder will probably be puzzled. I would go to Ward. You've got Clark, the DH, on deck. Kittle has come out, but he's not officially in the game yet. Jimmy Williams playing a mind game with Doc Edwards on the other side of the field. 
but Williams is going to let Ward pitch. They're looking for the bunt from Snyder. Gruber in at third base. This is a good time for Wells to throw to first base to see if Snyder tips his hand. See if he squares around the bunt. That'll give the defense an advantage, and they can really determine their defense. Now there's some confusion between Borders and Wells. They want to make sure that they've got their heads together. Going to see what's happening, but if I was Borders, I'd say, let's give a toss to first base. Just see if Snyder might tip his hand and square around early. That'll help out the defense an awful lot if they have an idea for sure that Snyder is going to bunt. Gruber at third base can really come charging hard to try to make a play at second. Well, if you're Doc Edwards, you've got to have him bunting. No. Nope. Remember that Snyder is a pretty good hitter. No Johnny Coral, good hitter. third base. Flashing signs. Jimmy Williams is going to go out there and discuss things. Yeah, I think he's going to go to war. He's going to go out and talk to the left-hander. I'll tell you what, if he brings in Ward, he'll definitely force a bunt. Asking him how he feels. He's pitched seven innings from Friday, Friday to to the night. So he pitched two on Sunday, two and a third on eight Sunday. Eight innings after pitching the eighth inning here tonight. He's had a lot of work, a lot of innings. Jimmy Williams wants to make sure that he's sound. And then it, he's going to discuss what Snyder's doing. But it looked like Snyder swinging away as Dwayne Ward stands by ready down in the bullpen. Snyder is a good low ball hitter. You're going to have to throw his fastballs up, crowd him with the fastball. I'm sure that he'll be swinging at this pitch at least. That was his pitch to hit. Good fastball down the middle. Once again, checking with Johnny Goral. Castillo has good speed at first. Be pretty tough to gamble on a hit and run in this situation. A line drive takes you out of the inning. Well, I'll tell you, I am surprised that Williams didn't go to Ward, and I'm surprised that Doc Edwards is not having this guy bunt at the plate. You'd think that Williams would go to Ward to face Snyder. Ward throws hard. Wells throws hard just the same, but Williams has a lot of confidence in this guy, David Wells. And I'm sure that if he feels that he's fit and rested enough, he's got confidence in him. Fly ball! Deep to left! Bell back at the fence. It's out of here. A home run. The game is over. The Cleveland Indians win it. Five to three. Whoa. Brother. Jimmy Williams. The manager, David Wells, the losing pitcher. Corey Snyder got a fastball. Down out over the plate. And the Indians come back with a big ninth inning victory. Well, Jimmy Williams will be our guest, hopefully, on extra innings. And you can ask him why he didn't go to Wayne Ward. That's Snyder's 12th home run. He leads the ball club now, his 36th RBI. Eight of his 12 home runs have come from the seventh inning on. Clutch hitter, and he was up there in the right spot. I guess what? that's why the Doc didn't have button. He's swinging the bat, wasn't he? There it is, this game is history. The Cleveland Indians win it five to three. You're watching the back, Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Blue Jays baseball has been brought to you by Petra Canada Dealers and Agents. Our energy is Canada. And by General Motors of Canada Limited.
This has been a special presentation of the Sports Network, produced in association with TV Labatt by authority of the Toronto Blue Jays, and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the Blue Jays. The final score, the Indians win it in the bottom of the ninth, five to three. The winning pitcher, Scott Bales at six and four, the loser, reliever, David Wells at three and three. The Labatt players of the game for Toronto, Cecil Fielder. He will receive the Hitachi 3D Super Woofer. And for Cleveland, Corey Snyder. He will receive the new Canon Sure Shot multi -tele. As well, an amateur baseball team will be the guests of Fielder and Hitachi at an upcoming game. Blue Jay relief pitchers receive the Skill Super Twist Cordless Power Screwdriver. When the pressure's on, count on Skill. And the new Remington Ultimate. Shave as close as a blade or your money back. Major League Baseball next on TSN, Friday, June the 10th at 7.30 Eastern, when the Expos host the Mets. Then on Thursday the 16th at 7.30 Eastern time, we'll be in Detroit to bring you the Blue Jays and the Tigers. Our baseball magic winner tonight, Valerie Hodgson's of uh, Halley Road, Ontario. Now stay tuned for extra innings and our guest, Blue Jay manager Jimmy Williams. We'll be taking your calls in just a couple of minutes. Swindell.